All right, my friends. Hope you're doing well. I have just returned from another work trip. Uh, this time I was in Dallas, Texas. So that was a that was a good trip. Uh, so yeah, but as you know, uh, when I'm traveling, I'm away from my hobby. Uh, so I'm just getting back into things. <clears throat> and last night uh, I de decaled this Travis Quapel 2011 Fellowship of Christian Athletes number 38 Ford Fusion and he drove this at the Michigan race in 2011 and so as a Christian I thought it would be cool to make this car when I saw it was available on Pato's <clears throat> So yeah, it's not a perfect match to what was driven on the track, but it's pretty close. It's pretty close. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out as well. Not too complicated, right? Painted it with the uh, marshmallow, color shot marshmallow paint. And I would say probably the most challenging part of this car is this, um, <clears throat> is this rear bumper. So... It's a tight fit. You've got this uh, exhaust decal. The Ford logo is huge. And then you've got this lettering and these rear lights that inevitably make their way up onto where the spoiler is. And so it's supposed to say the heart and soul in sports. Um, but you've got to use some micro soul soften up those water slide decals the silk ink ones get them into place and just work them in you know i get my brush and really you know work them in and then once they're in I get a coat of sealer then i go back over this area with black i could just use my razor blade and cut it off but i just left it there it's really hard to tell what's there but that's kind of the hardest part of this car. Everything else is, like I said, just really straightforward. Things line up pretty well. Uh, there's a little overhang here on this decal. Oh, this kind of wraps up underneath a little bit. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I did, you know, looking at the, at the pictures of the car. So it's a little complicated, but this decal here, Edelbrock, Comp, Melee, Moog, and the Gator back, is all one decal and it's kind of like all straight up and down so it's hard to get that to actually rotate back in this area above the Sunoco decal so I just cut it right above the melee and the Moog so so this these three were one decal going in and that enabled me to uh, slide the Moog and the Gator back over to the left a little bit following you know the way it actually looks on the car and and get that into place it's a little thing but I don't know I, I, I like doing that kind of thing to uh, to just make it look that much better and and fit more neatly with um, with again how it was driven on the track and, and all that so but yeah Fellowship of Christian Athletes Travis Quapple a really uh, rare uh, paint scheme I've never really seen before, so that's why I wanted to make it. Um, <clears throat> I just noticed I didn't put the hood pins on it or the trunk pins, so let me let me do that. Hope you guys are doing well. Like I said, I was gone for most of the week and back now. Glad to be home back with family back with uh, just the house a lot of things to do of course spring, spring cleaning and all that kind of stuff but um, yeah Memorial Day weekend great great time to cook out grill out whatever but also to remember remember the sacrifices that were made lives given for our freedoms can't forget history people got to know history learn history be careful of those trying to rewrite history and um, 
honor those. So what I like to do here, because there's no there's no hood pins on this diecast body, but they go just a little bit to the side of that corner. I remember when I did a lot of these like 2011, 2010, 2012 cars, I was thinking of doing, making like a little template for the hood pins because inevitably I was needing to do them on a regular basis and I wasn't always getting them straight, but it's not too bad. Try to get those two in and then I branch out a little bit back here. And then try to line that up with this. All right. Not too bad. Try to get them symmetrical as much as possible, but. All right. <clears throat> What's funny, <laughs> I I built the car and I painted the spoiler black just based off of pure habit. And then I was looking at pictures of the car and I'm like, dang it, it's white. And I think it's probably a practice picture, but, but anyways, everything was white. The lower valence is white, the side is white, the spoiler was white, roof line stayed white, and I should have just left it, but it is what it is at this point. But, yeah, pretty happy with that car. That's a rare one. I've never seen that made as a custom or anything, so. <clears throat> Just saw it on Paytos and had a had a knack for, for wanting to build it, so. I did. Picked up my beverage for the day. Monster, but it's the big 24-ounce one. These things are massive. Now, I don't recommend these for lightweights, but when you're 225 pounds, you can drink one of these. Maybe I shouldn't. If, maybe if I didn't drink as many, I wouldn't be 225 pounds. All right, what else is going on in the workshop today? So I wanted to show you guys, <clears throat> excuse me. So I went ahead and tore apart a couple of these uh, Gillette Young Guns Walgreens cars. And I have to admit, I, I, this is probably one of my best, my best purchases. This is 2007. It's a Motorsports Authentics and it's just a generic um, body that you could use for Ford, Chevy, Toyota, right? And I went ahead and I painted it. Here's, here's what she looks like. <clears throat> Just painted it jet black or with the Rust-Oleum black, high performance enamel. And you can see it's got the, it's got the hood pins, but on the nose, it's just generic. There's no indentations for anything that would make it you know unique to a Chevy or a Ford or a Toyota so I'm real excited about using this body for um, really for for the Toyota Deuce, uh, Doosan uh, decals that's kind of where I'm, what I'm after um, this was the the decal set that I'm going to use here nationwide car but really for anything that that is back in that pre-COT days. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm pretty happy with how this this goes together. It's not bad quality either. The glass is good. You know, it comes in this package, so it it, it stays it stays pristine as long as it's been out of the sun. This is a little flimsy here. The um, uh, taking this out. The dash here, it's a little flimsy. I, I did another one and it was a little bent, so you kind of have to make sure that's in place. And it's, it's up and 
up in its proper position. But yeah, you can see I messed up a little bit right there. For some reason, sometimes the paint, the spray paint just doesn't doesn't adhere or whatever. And actually, I probably don't have to do it. I was going to touch it up, but because this decal will come across here and will cover that, I think I'm fine. But if it didn't, you know, sticking with Rust-Oleum colors, you know, I can just. Can I do that ever so slightly and just roll with it? It's pretty, pretty consistent. Testers gloss black with with the Rust Oleum uh, spray paint. Yeah, see that Rust Oleum makes the testers or. I'm not sure of the history there if they bought them out or what, but you have a consistent color. Anyways, very happy with that. This is what the inside looks like. You've got your fire extinguisher. And let me do a little clean up here. So I got a little bit of red right there. And then I like to go around the seat like that. Flat black right there. Just kind of scrape that off. But yeah, that's kind of how I how I work the interior. Nothing too complicated, but and then when she goes back together, you lay this on here. You get some JB Weld, and you drop it on. So yeah, very happy with that. Very very happy with that. Again, I bought eight of these on eBay, and it was twenty three dollars shipped. So what are we talking? Three dollars? Three dollars a piece? I mean, you can't beat that for a donor car. I mean, even, you know, Circle B diecast when they have their annual sales, three bucks a car. I mean, that's insane. That's just really insane. So, yep, happy to, happy to get those. So this is the finished product. And I'm, I'm going to make two more so I can do a, a, a comparison. But this is the finished product of the Overwatch 2 scheme using the QuickShine product as a sealer. So I've got five coats of sealer on this guy. <clears throat> and like I said, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make two more. I'm gonna make one where it's sealed with just the pledge, and then I'm gonna make one where it's sealed with just this mop and glow product but you can see it's got a nice shine to it sure it's it's a you know it's a kind of an aircraft gray base color so it's not really going to yellow and 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 look like it's yellowed but Initial impression is that that product is a a viable alternative to the pledge. I I mean, I, and again, I can talk about this when when I um, when I do the others, but I think the only thing is it was it was two three coats before it really started taking in every area of the die cast. So sometimes you'll you'll brush it on and it'll kind of um, maybe have like a little area that little little spot that it doesn't quite adhere to and and then you know you kind of let it dry and then you go over it again and it, maybe it still doesn't adhere to it and then you've got to 
you know, do it a third time or a fourth time. And that's kind of what I noticed with this. Whereas the pledge, sometimes the pledge will just be like maybe one. The first time, they'll have like an area where it won't like really adhere to. And then the second time, it's done. It covers it and it's great. Um, with this product, it seemed to take more. But again, I, guys, um, I think I bought that for seven dollars, maybe eight dollars for that for that uh, jug of what is it? Twenty-seven fluid ounces. So, if you can't get the pledge, uh, I would say that that's that's not a bad alternative. Again, light coats, multiple light coats, and you can you can uh, make it make it work. You don't want to glob that stuff on. So yeah, so that's that. All right, Sergio, I've got your two here. Um, <clears throat> you wanted, let me see if I can get them over here. You wanted Denny Hamlin's Coca-Cola scheme, this red one. So I'm gonna be decaling that uh, today or tomorrow. And you also wanted this Casa del Sol, uh, Ross Chastain. And I've got that, you know, ready ready to decal, so I'll be doing that. Uh, like I said, either later today or tomorrow. See, I've got some work to do on my car, so that'll be happening. And then I'm going to be making this Ryan Sieg 2021 Ford Mustang. I've already cut out the decals. Let me show you what that guy looks like. Yeah, th th these are all always a challenge. So you got this large uh, hood decal. And it just seems like it's just way too big. And then you go over to the, to the roof decal. And it's just a monster decal. And so I'll put that in place and trim that down to size and, and all that try to get that in place and then you've got this dynamic trying to match in to everything else so not an easy decal or car to decal but I'm gonna try my hand at it this is another area that's tough this uh, rear bumper decal it's inevitably way too big and then of course the trunk decal which is, again, way too big. But always better to be big than to be too small. That's the worst of the worst when the decal set's too small and you have gaps. Another car I recently decaled is this Corey LaJoy SummerSlam number seven. I think this is my very last one. Chevy. Um, so this is my very last one of those. You'll see that up on eBay here. What's today? Today is Friday. <clears throat> so once I get that all sealed up and mounted in the case, I'll uh, I'll put that up on eBay. So yeah, so um, had a gentleman buy one of my cars from me. I think it was the Ty Gibbs Monster Energy car, and um, he got it. Was happy with it extremely happy with it sent me a message on eBay and he's like hey this is uh, pretty good stuff so he wants some more monster energy cars and like I've told you guys that the monster energy <laughs> if, if you ever want to get into die cast custom die cast making 164 scale you could just do monster energy cars all day every day and you'd make a killing because again you can't buy those monster energy cars anywhere in that scale and so boy oh boy I mean you got obviously you got Kyle Busch you got Kurt Busch you got um, Tyler Reddick now Ty Gibbs I mean ugh, anybody who's anybody collected 164's if you did a, a great job on a, on a monster energy car ugh, you you know yeah I mean 40 50 bucks a piece easy easy peasy but you gotta do a good job right you've got to do it well 
Um, you can't you can't do a do just an average job. People people don't they're going to pay money for a custom car. They don't want half-hearted job, right? They want a they want a um, a high quality. Doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be high quality, and and then people will pay for that. So, yeah, just a word to you guys that are making making custom cars. I mean, you can, and guys, they're not hard to make. Honestly, they're just straight black, right? You just paint them straight black, and then once you decal them, the hardest part is you get the sealer on, and then a couple coats. You can use something like. You know, I use this to get that matte finish, a couple coats of this acrylic, and you've got a terrific product. You hone your skills, you know, even practice on a few cars, hone your skills and get good at it. And boy, oh boy, yeah, nice, nice, uh, uh, nice thing. And, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, I like providing people with high quality customs collectors want high quality stuff don't settle you know go for the high quality stuff save your coins whatever you need to do um, but yeah you'll have something that very very few people have when it comes to those monster energy cars so <clears throat> alright I rambled on long enough about that let's close with a verse and one of the just terrific verses. I, I probably say that all the time, don't I? Um, terrific verses to commit to memory is Hebrews 4.12. The topic here is the Word of God. Hebrews 4.12. For the Word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. One of the things that makes the Word of God unique, outside of, you know, being God-breathed, coming from God Himself, the one who has created everything out of nothing, just speaking, God can create. It's amazing and incredible. We can't fathom the power and the, and the sheer majestic being of God. And he is so gracious to his creation that not only is he who he is in 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 love and righteousness and holiness and, and grace and mercy, peace that he bestows upon us, joy and happiness that he gives us, but he gives us his word and his very word as we read it, we note that it is living. It's alive. It is a, the Bible is a spiritual book. It is a book that is alive. And that's why it changes people's hearts and minds. Not just because it's wisdom and, and, and history and truth, but it is very much alive. And it produces in us a response led by the Holy Spirit. So it is alive, quick as a old King James word but it means that it's alive and it's powerful and the word is sharper than any two-edged sword so it's used for offense and defense and it is sharp and w w why does it have to need to be sharp right well it cuts us at the core of who we are it pierces even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit so if you want to read the word of God you'll notice it's not just surf it doesn't just stay on the surface with us and this is why some people turn away from it because they read it and they they feel they feel it cutting them spiritually cutting them and hitting them right where it counts and that's what the word of god does and then it says it gets down to the joints and marrow right right into our bones to the core of who we are because very few people want to go there a lot of people don't read the Bible um, they may read it and say I don't know does it make any sense and they forget about it and they, they move on to something else that they can understand but 
I encourage you guys to keep reading it, reading it, reading it. I remember when I first started reading it for myself. It was so intimidating. But you just keep reading it. And you may not understand a lick of what you read. But you come back the next day and you read something else. And you read, maybe you have to reread something again and again and again to get it. And that's kind of the way I am. I, I'm a little slow to that. But it is definitely a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And when you allow the Word of God and you meditate on the Word of God, God will speak to you because that's His Word. That's what He does. He speaks to us through His Word and we speak to Him in prayer. So, ah, what a great verse, Hebrews 4.12, about the Word of God. And if there's anything that I ever do on this channel, I want to encourage you guys to open up the Bible, the Scriptures for yourself. Yeah, I'm a King James guy, but you know what? Um, start that journey of reading the Word for yourself. Yeah, there's a lot of deception out there. There's a lot of people that will steer you astray. But God places the responsibility for our very souls, not on other people, but on ourselves. So we seek. Jesus said, um, uh, if you seek, you will find. If you knock, the door will be open to you. And so I encourage you guys to seek. And the best way to seek is to crack open that book or, you know, look at it online and read for yourself. Because, yeah, it's dangerous, right? It's going to cut you to the core. It's going to get to those places where very few people want others to know. But God sees it. And he's not going to beat you on the head with what you've done. And maybe what you've thought or what you've said. He's going to, yeah, it needs to be addressed. But he comes in the spirit of getting it right. So you confess your sins. You open yourself up to God and you say, God, yeah, I've done some stupid stuff. And I'm sorry. And God says, that's okay. I forgive you. Trust my son Jesus. And your sins are forgiven. And that's where we meet him. That's where I met him. And that's where we can all meet him. So, get into the word. And enjoy coming to know the God of the universe, the God of the Bible, who loves you unconditionally and just wants a relationship with you at the spiritual level, the heart level. All right. God bless. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and liking the video. Appreciate you guys. We will talk to you in the next video. God bless.